In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about navigation. But before we get into the G1000 itself, let's look at the sectional chart of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area and get our bearings on where everything is. What we're using here is a website called skyvector.com. Skyvector has images of all the current sectional charts for the United States. Although these are not valid for real-world flight planning, these are great for using with Flight Simulator and for training purposes. Here in the middle is the Washington, D.C. area. Over to the north, you'll see the Baltimore-Washington Airport. And to the west, you'll see Washington-Dulles Airport. You'll notice the rings of the Class Bravo airspace around all the airports, but specifically notice the rings around Washington-Dulles Airport and where they fall in relation to the Leesburg Executive Airport, or KJYO, which is the airport that we'll doing, be doing our sample flights from. For our sample flight, what we're going to do is we're going to plot a course from the Leesburg Executive Airport to the Casanova VOR. Leesburg Executive Airport is right up here. Casanova VOR is down here, and you can see it with the uh, typical symbology in the middle and the ring around it and the identifier box here that tells us the navigational frequency of 116.3 that we would tune in to tune in the Casanova VOR. For the purposes of this example, let's also use something in SkyVector that allows us to plot courses right on the map. So I'm going to put in KJYO and CSN. CSN is the GPS identifier of the Casanova VOR. Now we're going to do this in two different ways. We're going to navigate via VOR and later we're going to navigate by GPS. But for the purposes of uh, SkyVector, we need to use the GPS identifier to plot the course. So we've got the two, course, two uh, waypoints plugged in here. I just click Go and the map will redisplay. Let's recenter it here a little bit. And now you see a line between the Leesburg Executive Airport all the way to the Casanova VOR. So now that we've seen the big picture of how we're going to navigate from the Leesburg, Virginia airport to the Casanova VOR, let's set that up in the G1000. Before I can do that, though, we need to look at something in the PFD, specifically down here in the HSI section. That magenta pointer, and in fact the color magenta itself, is used throughout the G1000 to refer to anything related to GPS. Right now, the HSI is set up to listen to GPS courses and to tell us how to get to a GPS waypoint. But what we want to do now is we want to navigate to a VOR, which is using the nav radios. So we need to switch the HSI to not be listening for GPS signals, but instead be listening to either in the nav1 or the nav2 radio. The way we do that is we press this soft key at the bottom called the CDI soft key. When we press this key, the pointer on the HSI changes to now be listening to the NAV1 radio. If I press the CDI soft key again, now the CDI pointer is listening to the NAV2 radio. And finally, if I push CDI again, the CDI is listening to the GPS. Let's go up here to the NAV radio. The tuning cursor is already on the standby frequency of NAV1, so let's tune in the Casanova VOR, which is 116.3. I'm going to use the outer and inner knobs of the NAV tuning knob, and I'm going to tune in 116 on the outer knob, and on the inner knob, put in the point 3. And as you recall, we have to push the toggle button to toggle 116.3 over here into the active frequency, so we do that now. And now we see 116.3 tuned into the active NAV1 radio. Going back down now to the HSI, we're still telling the HSI at this moment to listen to the GPS. We want instead to listen to NAV1. So I'm going to push the CDI soft key one time, and now we see the green pointer and the NAV1 enunciation in the HSI. And also notice in the frequency section, the nav frequency has turned green. That green color is telling you that that frequency is what your CDI and your HSI is listening to. At this point, we're in the air. We're climbing out of 600 feet straight ahead. 
and you'll notice that the frequency section of the PFD next to the NAV1 frequency of 116.3 are the letters CSN. That's because the G1000 has figured out that 116.3 is identifying itself as the Casanova VOR by its Morse code signal. The fact that the frequency is green also tells us that that's the CDI that we have tuned in down at the bottom. Now at this point, it behaves just like a VOR gauge that you're familiar with in the traditional cockpit. All we have to do is go to the course knob over here and turn the course knob until we get the CDI centered to the radial that we want to track. And now we've got a course to that VOR, and we could turn to that if we want to. In fact, let's go ahead and start a turn in that direction towards the Casanova VOR. The other nice thing about the G1000 while we're in our turn, I'm going to change this course way over here to some different direction. The G1000 has an auto centering function even for the VORs, just like it does for the heading bug. So if I click in the center of the course knob, it automatically gives me a course directly to the VOR that's tuned in. So now we continue our turn towards the Casanova VOR, and you'll see the to from indicator telling us that we're moving to the station, and we know that we're tuned into the NAV1 radio as indicated by the NAV1 enunciation on the HSI and the green color up on the top of the frequency section of the PFD. So here we are, established on course to the Casanova VOR.